There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. All right, all right, all right. 96. 96. We're doing 96 tonight. So it is uh, March 21st. We are here, isn't it? Yeah, March okay. 21st. You just 2023. Like 2023. <laughs> uh, it's wonderful because the time has changed. It has. So it's yes, wonderful. Yes, yes. We can actually uh, see the lake now. <clears throat> Man, we're not having to deal with uh, feeling like we need to go to bed at 5.30 at night. Yeah, it's one of the best times of the year. I think we do that every single, we say that every single time we do a show in March each year. Yes. Time changes. You have more time in the afternoon to fish, golf, whatever you might All like to it. do. I was going to say, front nine Fridays are coming back oh, for yeah. sure. Yep. All right, Full so effect. tell me about what are we going to do tonight. Yeah, so we're going to discuss a little bit of rod repair, uh, more specifically um, what it pertains to for your, your handle section. Yep. So... We'll call it grip repair. Okay. So, you I know. Think that's what we're calling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we'll, we're going to talk about some cork and, and EVA refurbishment. Um, so, for instance, you guys can see this, this old uh, fishing rod we got up here. Um, we're going to show you how to kind of bring new life into these grips, whether yeah. they're cork or, or EVA. Um, we're also going to get into some... We're going to show a couple different ways. Yeah, a couple different ways. We're not just going to go like, this is the only way you can do this, and yeah. that's it. We'll show you how to bring it back to life, and then yeah. also kind of how to preserve it and uh, make sure, you know, years from now, uh -huh. these grips hold up better than they did before. Perfect. Um, we're also going to show you how to re-grip some rods, whether it be uh, EVA or wind grips or, you know, even cork grips. We're going to show you how to basically re-grip those rods. Um, so, you know, you don't have to take off your guides or none of that stuff. We're yeah. actually going to be going from the butt end of the rod mm -hmm. and installing the grips that way. So, um, you know, anything below your reel seat, whether it's a full length cork grip or split grip and a butt um, grip, yeah. you can take those off and put new grips on. And then um, we're also going to show you how to install some, you know, shrink tubing or even some of the win overwrap is yeah. a great addition for in a case to where you want to leave those grips and you don't really want to sand them, but you want to give them a new uh, surface, you yeah. can do that with shrink tubing or the wind over wrap. Yeah, because, you know, <clears throat> some of us have the tools. Some of us has a really cool workshop. Um, but others just need to get back on the water, yep. you know. And, and those are things that, um, you know, shrink tubing, and we'll show you how to clean a grip. We'll show you to do some of this stuff. Yes, we will be using the uh, CRB Pro power wrapper for some of this but it's not a requirement by any stretch. We want to show um, you know, different levels, different ways to fix and repair and clean and do all that stuff. So depending on what you're working with at the house, if, if you're working on the kitchen counter or you got uh, you know, a cool, cool man cave or, or the wife's got a she shed or whatever, like you guys will we'll kind of walk you through that. And of course, we know that you guys come for the demos, but we really, really know that you stay for the giveaways. So Hunter's got the credit card out tonight. Yep. We're doing uh, the first giveaway of the night. We're going to do a CRB handle kit, some cork filler, and some cork sealer. So for those that, um, you know, have that rod in the garage or maybe in the boat that needs a little love, if you win that one, that's going to be great. Coming in for a second giveaway tonight, we're going to do a full grip and a split grip setup for, with the MHX wind grips. Um, and we're going to be doing CRB casting and spinning reel seats. So. Cool. We're going to spread that around. Um, you know, you can use that to help repair stuff, or I can go to your next rod build. And of course, the grand prize, we like to do it up a little bit. We're going to throw in a rod kit there, that CRB Color Series. We're going to do the spinning or the casting rod kit, the new CRB Core Hand Wrapper yeah. as well. Yep. Uh, and as always, we will run the banner at the bottom. All you got to do is like and share this stuff comment, ask some questions. We'll put you in the giveaway. And of course, um, you know, if you've got any questions or if you are a winner tonight, email address is live 
at mudhole.com, live at mudhole.com. So uh, since we have mentioned the CRB Core hand wrapper, why don't you get that thing? All right. So this is going to be going uh, live tomorrow. <clears throat> it's already on the website, so you guys can sign up, hit that uh, email when available button on the uh, product page. I'm sure uh, we can throw some links in there for you guys to, uh, to get to that page. But like I said, this is going to be going live tomorrow um, around midday. Now, this core hand wrapper, we've really gone back to the basics and simplified uh, the hand wrapper. This thing is not only very simple and, uh, and easy to use, but it's also has a very small footprint. Yep. Compact design. And you know, it works great for not only an entry level rod builder, but also a rod builder that's on the go, that's yep. traveling, whether you're a tournament guy and you want to pack this thing away in your boat or your truck, you can repair guides on the go. Um, or if you're just, uh, you know, if, if you're busy with travel and you fly all the time, um, you know, you can build a rod in the airport. I think I saw a little video of Jake doing that earlier on the, um, the mud hole social page. Yeah, he was. So. I think he was actually using some of his mullet hair for the, uh, <laughs> for the thread wraps. Yeah. So that's going to so, be couple quick features you'll see we have uh, the base portion of this core hand wrapper we've got two uprights um, and an additional stand that goes along with this that's on an external base plate um, the great thing again about this is very small compact footprint doesn't take up a lot of space but what we have done is made this thing incredibly stable so you'll see on the underside on each corner we have these you know these rubber boots um, and what these do is they basically grip the surface, whether it's a bench or a table, they grip the surface very, very well. This yep. thing is not moving if it has any type of downward mm. pressure to it. So yep. very stable, but also very compact. You see we've got our, um, our thread carriage here, which accepts one spool of thread. We've got our uh, tension rod integrated here. Um, I mean, this thing is packed with features, but again, it's very simple. It's effective. It's to the point. Yes. So, and of course, they got our um, our bands to keep your your rod or your blank locked into place. Two notches on each upright, or two sets of notches. That way, if you have a large OD, small OD, it can accommodate um, a very wide range of blank ODs. Yep. Um, I think that <clears throat> covers it. Like I said, it's yep. Uh, very simple, very effective. Price point is thirty four ninety five. Again, it's, it's, it's great for a beginning uh, rod builder or, uh, or even somebody that's constantly on the move and just wants to repair or even build a full rod. Yeah, I mean, I know that, you know, for the guys that tournament fish or if maybe they've got, you know, a, um, maybe a lake house or something where, you know, they can't run the big machine, right? right. Or there's a youth angler and, you know, um, Jennifer or Timmy or whatever wants to build a fishing rod in the comforts of their room, probably having, you know, something like that. It's inexpensive. It's very easy to use. You know, as you mentioned, there's tons of features, even though it's very, very simple. Right. So there's really nothing to go wrong here. Rod blank goes in the holder. You've got one spool of thread. You still have the tension rod that everybody loves so much. Right. Uh, and you just get down to it for under $40. Yep. It's really, it's really hard to beat that. So. Yep. That's it. Like I said, um, it's <clears throat> on the website now. The stock is not there yet, but we'll have this available around midday tomorrow. Make sure you sign up for the email reminder. And then obviously, if, uh, if you're signed up for the uh, newsletter yeah. email, uh, you'll get one of those you'll as well. You'll get that thing. Yep. Sweet. And then uh, last but not least, a little more housekeeping. Uh, we are expecting uh, the shipment of G2 Power Wrappers in very soon. And those will be hopefully in stock around uh, next week sometime. Not a confirmed date for sure, but um, same thing there. If you guys are in the market for a new power wrapper, check out the G2, the CRB Pro G2 power wrapper. Um, in stock somewhere around next week, and uh, just make sure you hit that email when available button, and you'll be one of the first to get the uh, email when yep. it comes in. This is, a, this is a good question here though. Uh, Austin, are you still going to offer the old one? I'm assuming that you're talking about the regular hand wrapper. Correct. The advanced hand wrapper. Advanced hand wrapper. There is no way that hand wrapper is ever going anywhere. The core hand wrapper is really just um, for those that coming in at a lower price point, it's a little smaller footprint, it's a little more mobile, 
um, you know, things like that. But trust me, the advanced hand wrapper is, is going nowhere. Yep. All right. Cool. I think we're good. Um, just need to make sure. You know, Andrew had a good point. He said, I've been thinking of learning to wrap rods. I have a few that I need to repair. That's really how so many rod builders get involved in rod building. It is, yeah. Is through rod repair. It is. So, you know, we're, we at Mudhole are constantly trying to, you know, make it easier to get into, affordable, and, and all those things for, you know, for those that don't maybe have the ability to either buy or house something like a unit like this. So, um, yeah, everybody's got a rod that they could fix. That's without a doubt. Even if without you don't want to build it, everybody's got something. And if you drop your fishing rod at a tackle shop, they're going to charge at least $10 to touch a fishing guide, a fishing rod guide, right. period, the end. So you do three guides on one rod, and you can just mm -hmm. get the hand wrapper, or the core hand wrapper. So yeah. All right, let's get down to this thing. Um, we have to talk about cork and EVA refurbishment. Yep. All right. Yeah, we're going to cheat a little bit because we got the uh, CRB Pro G2 Power Wrapper. But there's a couple ways that we can go about this. And I want to show you a few things here. Uh, cool, man. Let's jump in here and show the difference in what just a few spins with a Magic Eraser on a Power Wrapper can do right there on that foregrip while I get it. And um, let's see here. All right. So... We got a cup of water. I promise that's water, even though it looks like <laughs> looks like St. John's River water. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we've got a magic eraser. Okay, we're gonna wet the magic eraser, and then kind of wring it out. Right? We're gonna kind of squeeze it out. Because really, if you just leave too much water on there, you're just gonna wear it. Honestly. So I like to go around the grip and just kind of dampen it. First. And I'm actually gonna, I learned this earlier. I stand to the side a little bit and I wear glasses. Because it will sling it. And I don't know what's in this water, so. Mm. there just kind of going through turning it this is something that you can do if you are not going to sand a grip and you just want to clean it up now I'm not really somebody that tends to wipe all my uh, good vibes off of my fishing rod grips but if you're somebody that wants to keep it clean that's, that's one way to do it, okay? So that is simply a magic eraser, some water, and then a lot of the time, Hunter, I know, is a, you're a big cork seal guy, right? Yeah, it's a definitely a good idea. So this needs to dry, right? That's wet, but we will come back in at times and use the U40 cork seal. Uh, this will kind of soak into the, co uh, the cork, and it will seal it and it'll help, you know, it's kind of like wax in a truck, right? Although it won't make the grip slippery. So this is, I just wanted to show you guys real quick why we had the Magic Eraser, what it can do um, for you there. And those are inexpensive. Now, let's pull this one out and we're gonna go to, if you want to sand and do some actual repair work, all right. So if we're sanding and repairing, we've got an old beat up from uh, somebody downstairs before they saw the light here and started building. All right, so I think you guys can kind of see uh, there's no camera tricks here. This down here is what it used to look like, which matches the foregrip. You can see that 
that looks um, pretty grimy. <laughs> Hopefully there's a lot of memories in that though. Yeah. You know? I'm sure there was plenty of fish. Yeah, plenty of fish. Now, what we did is we went from this and sanded it. Now, if you look, you're gonna see these voids in the cork, right? Voids are normal. Some have more than others because some cork is nicer than others, right? So this is something that we actually use Elmer's wood filler for, right? This is uh, official Elmer's rod building cork filler, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah, that's it. it. Yeah, sure. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we carry this. You also can buy it um, locally, I'm sure. But we use the wood filler to come in here and fix these. Now, what ends up happening is you have a lot of old filler out here or in here in the old section of the grip. Every cork handled fishing rod has filler in it unless you built it and you have the most gorgeous cork known to man and there's no voids in it. Uh, there was cork that used to, you know, kind of be that way. I've got some really nice cork at home that I still build some fly rods with, but honestly, it's tough to get exceptional cork these days. So every store-bought rod, everything, it's got filler in it. Um, if you sand it from this to this, you will probably, if you're going to take, if you take enough material off, you're going to loosen this filler, okay? And it's going to start flying out and it goes all over the place. But what I do is like, almost like a dentist will check cavities. I will come in with, um, like the probe set. Isn't that what these are? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get four or five of these. You've seen me use this on a tiger wrap because I just like it. I will come in here and some of these voids, I will check them and I will actually dig out some of the old, nasty, dried out cork filler because it just happens. Some of the cork filler is still in really good shape and if you touch it, you can tell like, okay, that's in there secure and snug and that's not going anywhere. But You've got a really big one like this, you're actually going to want to press in some cork filler and I'm going to show you how to do that here in a second. Cool, man. zoom in on this part right here. <clears throat> so this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. So we went from voids here and now we are out here on this section. I actually went through, I filled some voids, you can kind of see a couple voids in here. There's one here by the trigger on the seat. Uh, that sees a lot of wear. You know, we see voids open up there. But this section of the grip now looks pretty good. I filled voids in. I've sanded it. Um, and we at Mudhole sell di three different types of sanding. So we've got, um, what is it, like medium, fine, and extra fine or something like that? Correct. So we got three different grades. I think one is a, a 80, 120, and then 320. Um, so you, I kind of step up like that as I work through this. And of course, for final, I just use the 320 and that, that does a really good job. You can go much higher. I mean, you can even come in here with some like steel wool and make this feel like velvet if you really want to. But um, just to give you an idea, that's what it, that's kind of what it looks like. And of course, I'll peel back this tape here and show you, you know, kind of the band of what it looked like, and you can see the difference. So that is before we really got after it. So it's a huge, huge difference. Joe's got a good question here yeah. I'll, I'll hit you with. Come uh, on, Joe. So the triple or quad grade cork still has filler in it. Correct. In, yeah, in, in like finished grips. Yes. So. Even, even, the honestly, best some of, of the, the best of the best. Yes. Even, even some of the nicest stuff has got it in it. Yeah, honestly. Cork is a natural material, so yeah. what you're going to see is, you know, a lot of the best quality, you know, best cork in the world, goes to the wine companies for their for yeah. their their cork um, for the wine bottles, and then we kind of get, you know, what's left over, sure. right? Which, sure. you know, even the the best cork rings that you can uh, purchase, you know, even if they're uh, quadruple A or whatever it might be, you know, there's yeah. there's a lot of different 
um, grades, grades and names. And everyone's right. a little bit different, but even the best quality cork rings or finished cork grips that you can buy are still going to be filled to some extent. Um, you yeah. know, it, it, it just it varies by grade, but uh, to answer your question, Joe, it, they definitely do. Now, I'm not I'm not somebody that is afraid of voids in my cork. Like, I will buy the nicest grade of cork and or the nicest grade that I can afford but I will try to buy the nicest and it's still gonna have voids yeah. now the voids are not going to be as deep and as many mm -hmm. as there are in the lower ones so I just let it ride I, I'm not somebody that likes cork filler it's just that every store-bought rod is gonna have it in it because also most of the time they don't use really high grade cork. Now if you're buying like you know a thousand dollar fly rod off the shelf from Orvis or Loomis or Sage or whatever, they're, pro they're still gonna have filler in it but the cork is still going to be that much nicer so there's not gonna be as much filler and as many voids in it but um, you know that's kinda up to you if you wanna buy and you know, a lower grade cork ring and then add filler back to it and stuff. Or if you want to add filler to the highest grade cork ring, you can do that too. I just personally don't do it. I will just live uh, and accept the voids because it's a natural product. I'll just buy the nicer cork. Yeah. But it's always going to be there. So, um, Hunter, why don't you walk me through, why don't you walk them through the, uh, the cork seal? Yeah, the cork seal is super easy. You know, it doesn't even require much of a demo. So this is a, uh, a water-based sealant, as yep. is what we can call it. And all you really got to do, go. um, let me just grab a little plastic mixing. Right here? Yeah, we'll just, oh, okay, perfect, didn't see those. Yep. Grab a little mixing cup and uh, one of our disposable brushes. All you got to do is, Of course, be careful and not spill it. Take the seal off the top, comes off pretty easy. Just dump a little bit into our mixing cup. Doesn't take too much. Um, you can do this in multiple coats too. It's kind of, um, it's, it's a little bit similar to Color Preserver. It's, it's obviously more water-based, but um, all you really gotta do is just kind of apply it to the grip. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, and you know, the good thing about that U40 is it does come with directions. Um, it's not a situation of it's going to be better the more you put on it because it's going to absorb what it's going to absorb and it's going to be done. Um, that actually leads me into this question here. Steve had a great question. Can you stain cork? And if you can, will the sealer then still work? So. Steve, what's going to happen if you stain cork is because it is a natural product, it will take stain. Now, the issue is it takes it in different, um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of the word, but it's not going to be a perfect even stain, if you get what I'm saying. So that's why also for some woods, you use a like stain prep uh, where it's like almost like a stain primer and it helps the wood take it more evenly. That I have never tried on cork and stain. But yeah, technically you can stain cork because it really is just wood um, to an extent. But it, when I have played around with it, it can be a weird look to it. It's not going to be a perfect like, oh wow, that that really looks like maple, or that really looks like rosewood, and it's perfect. It's, it's not going to be like that. I'm not saying that you can't do it. It's just kind of a weird, it just can come out weird because of the way that cork is. And I, uh, I stand corrected on the multiple coats because I just read the label, which, uh -huh. uh, you know, first things first, uh -huh. read the directions. Yeah, you see, um, did you see how I kind of slid that one in there? Yeah, you know, it yeah. says, uh, you know, one coat is all you need. Yep. You know, I, I just like to be extra careful, that's all. Yeah. Chris asked, uh, cup, question mark, why not use it out of the container? Um, Hunter's got a way of spilling things sometimes. Actually. So we... Actually. <laughs> go ahead. The I reason know. why I actually put it into a mixing cup is what you'll notice is, you know, even if you get this cork grip extremely clean, there's always going to be a little bit of, uh, you know, dust, debris yeah. on your actual cork grip. And it'll go back in that bottle. 
Exactly. You, you see, you yep. know, I'm not as dumb as I look sometimes. No, 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 not at all. I just, you know, I know you've been known to tip a bottle over there every now and then. <laughs> yeah, and definitely, so, yeah. I, so I figured if we lost two milliliters yeah. of it rather than the whole damn thing. And uh, you will notice that it will, um, you know, it, it, it does unfortunately bring out more of the flaws of the cork. Yeah. It, it, you character. Know, it, it's character, character, right? You know, right. but if you, you know, did the proper steps in sanding and then, uh, you know, applying your, um, your, uh, your cork filler, you know, a lot of these gaps and everything you see in here are going to be filled, are going to be filled and it, it's, it's obviously okay. Yeah. That's going to kind of wear down over time and it won't have that kind of bright shine luster to it you know yeah you're that, honestly gonna fish it like once or twice and, and it's that's gonna be, that's gonna be gone it'll um, be back to normal so that's the only downside with cork sealer is it does really highlight uh, some of those imperfections but trust me this stuff uh, works really well it's gonna extend the life uh, of your cork grip and you can do this you know multiple times you can do it once a month once every six months once a year what whatever you want to do or just not at all <laughs> or never do it yeah uh it's completely up to you but i will say since this does have a very you know um it has a coating that's going to wear down over time so if you do decide to do it you know sooner rather than later you might want to actually hit this with a little you know um with some really fine sandpaper to just take that coating that's on there off yeah. kind of start from a blank slate mm -hmm. and then put another coat of cork seal over top yep. of it uh Question, should you put cork seal on composite cork? I, I don't think it's honestly no. worth doing it because no. the way that the cork seal reacts with the natural cork and it kind of absorbs into it and, and things like that, composite is just, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't put it on the composite, like if you have a composite butt cap and you've got natural cork on the whole handle, that's fine. And it's, it's not going to ruin it by any stretch, but I wouldn't go through the time and effort and money like coating an entire handle mm. of, of composite. Composite's cork. really durable. You know, you won't see the, the pits, the imperfections typically with, yeah. with composite cork, um, or you shouldn't see them at all with composite cork yeah. or, or even rubberized cork. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, it's not necessary. Yep. All right. Um, let's see, Bill, after you sand the grip, what did you prep with before sealer? Uh, honestly, after I sanded the grip, um, I just wiped it down with some alcohol. So uh, this I've got here, I've, I've got 99%, but that's just because I think that's what you ordered in a case, right? Yes. They probably were out of 70 or 91 or something. We were the high test. I was, I was gonna say, we got the, uh, <laughs> the premium. We got the AV gas that they put in airplanes right there, right in the bottle. So that's, uh, that's aviation fuel by CRB. <laughs> All right, um, let me show you real quick how to put a little bit of cork sealer in here. And don't worry, I'm not gonna keep you all night. Um, filler, oh, cork filler. Cork filler, what did I say? Sealer? sealer. Yep. Sealer on the mind. All right, uh, come on in here, cool man. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, there you go. What is that, like 6X? That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, so got a void there, right? If you have a giant, oh, that's still wet. Uh -oh. um, give me that thing. If you have a like giant void, I'm talking like it's not even a void at that point, okay? Uh, it's really, really bad. <clears throat> I do it in layers, okay? Because you're going to put this in and it's going to dry and then you're gonna add a little bit more, okay? It's like drywall. If anybody has ever like done any drywall mud, um, you're not gonna put like a big two and a half inch blob and just like, you know, if somebody has too much, you know, energy drink and they put, put their fist in a wall or something, you know, like you're not gonna fill a, you know, a three inch hole in the wall just full of wet mud, right? So you're gonna have to do a lot more work and, and layer it. So that's not a great example, but that's what it is. So. We're gonna put little by little if you've got a giant one. This one is actually, it's big, but it's not really that deep. So I don't cut a big hole in the end of this guy. I kind of do a small one. And I go all the way to the bottom of the void and I squeeze it and you can kind of see it there, kind of working its way out. 
Now I will then take and mash it in there as good as I can and then drag my finger out of it, right? So you can kind of see it filling up there. I'll add a little more here to this end. I do little by little, I put a lot of pressure on it and then slide it away. Sometimes I feel like if I squeeze down on it and then lift perfectly vertical like that, it'll like stick to your finger and it'll pull it out. Now, sometimes it'll fill it as far as it needs to fill it. Sometimes you're left with a little edge on it. That's okay. I wouldn't just keep piling it on. If the, if the void is that deep, put it in there and let it dry. It doesn't take that long. Let me see what this thing says. Yeah, sand shallow repairs after 15 minutes and deep repairs after two to eight hours. So I knew that that question was coming and that's what it says on the back of this thing since I read the directions. So I was gonna say the same thing. You can put this on here and walk away, come back in 30 minutes and you can sand it. But if you've got one that's like crazy deep, you're gonna have to do layers. I know you could probably fill the whole thing and come back in eight hours. I though personally like to do a little bit, come back in a half hour, do a little more, come back in a half hour. And um, you know, this doesn't have to be in a machine. You can stand it up on the side. So it's not like you're waiting for cork filler to dry when you could be wrapping. So that's all we do. We just fill one void and the next, kind of move on. So you're just gonna press it in and slide it over, right? That's just the way I do it. There could be people at home right now just freaking out that they don't do it the way I do it, but um, that's okay too. I've had really, really good success doing it like this. And you can actually come back and add a little bit more. <clears throat> you can skim coat some of this stuff too. So like, don't be afraid if even if these areas aren't really much of a void, you can come in here and, and kind of skim coat some of these really just kind of fine lines, you know? Maybe the crow's feet of cork grips, right? <laughs> You know, it's just not as expensive as oil of Olay, right? I think that's a thing, right? All right, so that's how you add your cork filler. You know, go eat your, uh, you know, hot pocket or whatever, have yeah. you a cold beer, and come back and sand it. And then you'll be left with this part right here. After you're done sanding, wipe it with some alcohol, make sure you get all the residue off, and then come in with your cork seal. Got a couple good questions here. All What's right, the me. name of the color of your uh, your cork filler slash wood filler? Golden oak. Golden oak. There you go. And then a uh, question from Donovan: Would it be better to add cork dust or pieces to the filler for better results? What do you think about that? Um, so if you, I have seen people do that in the past. They will take if they're doing a lot of sanding. Um, you can, you know, kind of hoard your cork dust, yeah. uh, and if you got a few pieces in there, and if you are doing, you know, a big chunk out of there, um, you can use wood filler and, and, you know, bring back in some of your cork dust. It's been good. I, uh, I just don't, you know, none yeah. of the voids and stuff that I feel have been big enough in some of the cork to really feel like I need to go through that much extra work. Mm -hmm. You know, I just like to hold the shop back up to it and sand it and just, you know, let the cork dust go where it needs to go and not have to collect it. So yep. it's not a bad idea. It's just I, I haven't needed yeah. to do it. Um, Larry has a question. Can you put the sealer over filler? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. As long as you, you know, let your filler dry, sand it, um, and just, then seal it. This looks good to go. The, uh, and it'll actually help keep the filler from coming out as easy as it might have when it was factory built. Definitely. Um, the sealer takes about 30 minutes to an hour to dry. Yeah. It, it's fairly quick. Um, and then probably for best results, give like a full 24 hours and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even that has, has lost a little bit of its shine from earlier, so you know yeah. it's I also wiped it, in. But wiped it. That was just because, you know. But yeah, that's, that is pretty much what it'll look like. It doesn't it changes the color just a little bit, and it does feel slightly different, but it's not like it's tacky or it's not like it's, it doesn't feel that different. Yeah. So. And that's a good point you made too. I, I completely missed that part, but 
Um, it's definitely a good idea to wipe away the excess, even if you, yeah. even if you can't see any visible, you know, extra, you know, liquid or cork sealer on top of your grip. Yeah. Just give it one little pass with a dry paper towel and make sure. For sure, because once it like takes, once the cork absorbs what it's going to absorb, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> yeah, that's so. it. Probably ought to give something away. Let's Everybody's been waiting patiently at home. So third place. Have we got anything else that we need to answer? Third place uh, giveaway for tonight. We're going to do a CRB handle kit. Um, then we're going to throw in some cork filler and some cork sealer. All right. Great prize to kick it off. Let's see what we got. Who's you our? Know how to run that thing over there? Yeah, I think so. All right. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Who's the lucky winner? Vergara Custom Rod Works. Cool. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Yeah. Coming out of Facebook. Congratulations. CRB handle kit plus cork filler and cork sealer. We gonna trade places back? You good over there? I don't know. I was looking for the other one. Uncle Phil, I lost your red metallic. Oh, I see it okay. over there. Grab that for me, Hunter Man. Cool. All right. All right, so what we get into now, so we got wind grip We're repair. talking about wind grips. Cool. Right. There was a couple questions <clears throat> earlier about that, so. So this is a hot button item. Perfect. This, this is, I know everybody <clears throat> has their opinions on it, so uh, we'll let you all discuss that. But if you've got a wind grip that's really, really, really showing its age, there's a couple ways that you can do. If you really don't feel like cutting this thing off, you can come and shrink wrap it right now you could shrink wrap just over this entire thing that's completely okay um, you can cut it off completely and remove it and then re-grip so you're left with something like this here with no grips and we're actually going to show you how to re-grip here in a little bit right so on the bottom here we'll just call that a worn out wind grip and then here is if you want to cut it off now, pay no attention here to the fighting butt. <clears throat> that was uh, Uncle Phil. Is that your, was this your first rod? Second rod, okay. Well, you know, it shows, but <laughs> it's all right. He, uh, he didn't quite get the fighting butt there uh, where it needed to be. And we've and, all been there. Yeah. And he gripped it and ripped it, and boy, did he ever. So we'll just ignore this, this portion down here. So if you cut the seam on the wind grip, you can actually peel it off. So I'm going to cut that off <clears throat> show you what that looks like. This is if you do not want to cut off the entire grip and you just want to cut the wind polymer off. I come in here at the seam. We're going to cut the seam. And you guys and gals at home can thank uh, the one and only Jay Cutchinson for this. Um, he said, you know, you can just peel that off. And uh, I was like, yeah, I know, which I didn't. So you can just take and peel this polymer off, and you're left with the uh, whatever you want to call this underneath, EVA. All right. So now we got EVA underneath here. Some peel easier than others. I'm going to knock mine. And on next off. show, we're doing tip repair. All right, you get one good one. <laughs> hey, you, get, on. you get one good one a month. Okay, there you go. So it's good. I'm happy for you. All right, next show is actually under wraps. I was going to say it's under wraps. All right, so there is your polymer skin. And now we're left with just our wind grip, EVA. Which is, I was going to say, it's just EVA. Just EVA. Right? That's all a wind grip is underneath. Now, there's a couple ways that we can go about this. This black one is kind of hard to see. So I'm actually going to show you on a tan one that I've got right here. So we've got a tan one that we've already cut off. Now, if you notice, you're still maintaining like the ridges on the, the little high spots on each end here, right? So you can take, what, what size of the heat shrink did we have? 30, 
35 millimeters. 35 millimeters. 35 right. millimeters. Yeah, that sounds right. Is it in millimeters or is it just the size uh, 35? Oh, I can't remember. Uh huh. Let's stick with size 35. Size 35. Here it is. So this is the fish scale, right? This size will get over this fighting butt, and it will also slide up here. Now, I have pre-cut this, okay? So that heat shrink is going to be, it falls right in between the little grooves here. What I recommend doing is using, what did I do with that CRB ruler? CRB ruler. Mm -hmm. uh, it was back there. Is it under the heat shrink? Nope. I haven't seen the ruler. All right, Hunter. Hmm. Anyway, we had a, we had the CRB metal ruler. The reason I use the ruler is because it has inches and centimeters on it, and it's heavy, it's all metal, and it's really, really nice to cut extremely sharp and clean edges. Thank you. So here is the CRB ruler. And of course, there's a conversion table on the back. Anyway, so we use the CRB ruler to measure the heat shrink and to cut it with a razor blade. I don't care how good you think you are with scissors, it's not nearly as accurate as using a nice heavy metal ruler as a straight edge. So, let me just do this real quick. Heat gun. Make sure we're getting it where it needs to get. Hopefully this isn't like mega loud volume in the, in the uh, microphone there. And you can kind of manipulate this, slide it around. It is hot, so be careful. We are using a real heat gun here. What setting? Did you have that on low? No, that was on high. On high? Okay. Yep. Got a question. What temp did you have your heat gun yeah. set to? On uh, two. Whatever one and two, two. is. I have one two. So it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, good for uh, good idea there, Mr. Jake Hutchinson. So it's not too bad. Feels pretty good. You don't have to worry about cutting um, the grip off, and you get your fish scale on there. Looks pretty good. And of course, you can do the same down here in the uh, fighting butt section. So that's it. Yeah, it seems like the, the thickness of that shrink tubing is pretty equivalent to what you it's pull close. off of it's there. It's close. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you all at home. It's not exact. But close. But it is darn close. Now, the other good part about this is, since it's not exact, and if you do have a power wrapper, you can put this in, and you can turn that EVA down with a little bit of sandpaper, and it'll also clean it because the outside of that EVA looks kind of crappy because it's old. So that, you could kind of turn it down a little bit and then it would really made up nice to that seat. And then, you know, you can just run that. So that's kind of a, uh, a no pain grip repair. Yeah. And like I said, you could just run a whole piece of heat shrink right over the top of it if you didn't want to cut it. But if you wanted to give it a little different look, there you go. Yeah. And if you really hate this idea, uh, you can send an email to Jake Hutchinson at, no, but, uh, yeah, so like uh, Manny, do you use or uh, yeah, do you use shrink wrap over cork? You can use shrink wrap over anything. Anything. It doesn't matter. Anything that can handle the heat. Yeah, so you know, for instance on that polymer, you could have easily left that on there and just mm -hmm. shrink wrapped over it. Yeah. But what's cool about the polymer is you do have the two raised sides on, yes. on each grip. Right. So you can kind of, you know, 
it's, it's kind of a replacement for the polymer as opposed to just keep, hiding it, keeping it on there and then shrink wrapping over it, you know. Um, and of course, you can still, you know, like we, like we said, you can use shrink wrap on anything. Yeah. Cork, EVA, wind grips. I don't know. Carbon tubing. Everything. All anything. CFX grip. <laughs> Whatever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. matter. So that's that. Cool. Yep. Sweet. All right. Let's see if we got any other questions here. Uh -huh. All right. Let's see. We got a couple other things. That you know, I did see a, a good pro tip. Uh, here it is. Oh, Ron, pro tip? just a tip. Don't get sunscreen on the wind grips. That is a very, very good tip. I'm telling you, I don't, I don't like sunscreen on my skin, <laughs> much less anything <laughs> okay. on any of my yeah, gear. Yeah, handle your grips. Um, so it's just one of those deals that, especially the spray sunscreen, I, uh, I, I like to mention to the clients before they get on the skiff, like, if you got spray sunscreen, throw it in the trash can or spray it in your hand before you put it, <laughs> apply it. Because not bring it on the boat. Golly, it kills everything. So, yeah, that, that is a good tip. Yep. And then we also have uh, the wind overwrap, yeah. which, you know, you could have easily used the wind overwrap in replacement of the uh, shrink tubing. I got some more. It's a little more time, um, time intensive, but it... it you know, you could still do it in 15 minutes. Yeah, it's not too bad. No. And that would be, you know, about your, your best replacement if you did have a, a wind grip and you wanted to actually re-grip the polymer. This yeah. wind overwrap is, uh, <clears throat> is essentially the same thing. Yeah, and you know, I will say too, like the wind overwrap is pretty good if you're also covering like a larger area. Yes. Sometimes if you're covering like a little short section of fighting bud or you're trying to do a, a rear grip that's it's little. Tough. It's tough. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it, it is kind of tough because there's just, you don't have much room to work with and you have to tape it down on either side to help secure it, even though there is adhesive on the underside. Um, so if you are in a cramped space, this is kind of tough. Yeah. But if you're going to use it on like a long gaff handle or you're going to regrip, you know, a full length cork grip or, a, you know, we did have a carbon tube grip, 11 inch section run wind polymer over wrap mm -hmm. over, it was great. Yeah. But if you're gonna try to do like a little fighting butt, it's, it's gonna be tough. Yeah. So yep, yep. just a fair warning there. It is great, but it does have some limitations just like everything. Uh, what else, what else? We'll do a couple more questions and then we'll hit a giveaway. Yeah, let's hit a giveaway because we also, into the next segment, we are gonna have the famous Buzz Butters do a cut in here with us. He's gonna show us how to remove a grip and uh, he does a great job with that. If you have taken a rod building class, which if you don't know anything about rod building classes, not gonna lie, you've probably been under a rock for a little bit, but um, if you wanna learn about it, mudhole.com slash classes, we've got, we've got really good info there. So yep. um, let's do a giveaway. Uncle Phil, you're gonna cue that up. This is going to be a full and split grip MHX win grip plus CRB casting and spinning real seats. I think, yeah, you didn't bring any up here. No, but that's okay. Jonas Lind, Jonas Lind, uh, out of Facebook, congrats. Wonderful. You got uh, two uh, grip kits and two real seats. Yeah, Come pretty, much, pretty much two handle kits. Uh, and as always, live at mudhole.com, that's how you get to me, and that's how we set you up, uh, you know, if you wanna, I'll work with you if we've got a certain color spinning real seats you want, or if you just want the plain one, or, or whatever. We'll go from there. So, excellent. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see. Anything else before we uh, before we cut away to um, Randy? Randy Butters and the Great White North. Um, Did we? Hopefully, we gave him a heads up, right? We just gonna we just gonna catch him while he's building some ice rods. Not sure. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna catch him in the hut, in the ice hut. Yeah, we got some questions, but let's go. Let's go ahead and roll the. Uh, let's okay. go ahead and roll the clip, and we'll get some questions. How are you towards... feeling about that, Uncle Phil? You ready to go? Good to go. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's take a trip to the Great White North. Actually, he has a set that looks just like ours. Go ahead and run that. <laughs> we got Buzz Butters huh. coming in right here. Let's get out of his way. <laughs> Okay, we talked about uh, keeping and maintaining the grips. Now let's talk about some grip removal. If you've got grips damaged, 
and you need to remove them and, and replace them, there's a couple of easy ways that you can do that. Let's talk first about EVA foam. EVA foam is a simple, usually it is a friction fit, but it is a simple uh, drill and glue type of grip. Whether these are put in, sometimes they'll get chewed up in rod holders, um, they can become damaged by uh, uh, wear or misuse, and so you may have to get these grips off. EVA grips are primarily a, a friction fit, which means there's not a whole lot of epoxy holding these things on. So what we'll do to remove an EVA grip is we'll just take a razor blade and go down till we can start to feel where the blank is in that grip and just carefully slide it down that grip all the way to the bottom. I'm not forcing that razor blade into the blank. I'm just cutting through the EVA. Practice on something so that you can get the skill level that when you're replacing a grip on a $400 spin rod, that you're not going to damage that blank because really that's what it comes down to. So removing these EVA grips, as I mentioned before, it's real simple. You can just run down them with a razor blade and then you can just take your fingers or a screwdriver and just start peeling the EVA grip right off of the blank. And you'll notice on this blank, there's very little material on the blank left. There's very little epoxy and there's very little of the actual foam. So this grip comes off very easily. So all you're gonna do is make the long cuts with the razor blade, not cutting into the blank, and then just take and start peeling it off. And it'll take you about two, three minutes to totally get that grip off of that rod. So that's the removal of EVA grips. Let's talk about removing cork off of, off of grips. And this is, this is one that tends to throw off rod builders quite a bit. Let's say that the reel seat broke loose. That happens a lot on um, uh, mass produced rods. And so you have to have, find a way of repairing this reel seat to hold it in place, or you've got damaged grips. Now one option is to strip all the guides off of the rod strip the foregrip off of the rod, fix this, and then rewrap all of those guides. A lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money. Much easier to remove the rear grip and replace it. We know that on this rod, that the blank is running down the middle of this cork grip, okay? We know where the blank is based on having built rods on these cork grips in the past. So all we're gonna do is take a pair of channel locks, and you take a pair of channel locks, and you grab the outside third of that grip. I'm not grabbing where I know the blank is down the middle. I'm grabbing that outside third of that grip with the channel locks. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Just take it, squeeze down on it, squeeze it together, and that is the cork removed right off of the blank. All right, I did not damage the blank. I didn't even scratch the blank. All I did was pull that cork loose off of the blank. And with mass produced rods, there is very little epoxy that holds these, these cork on here. So this is very easy to do. So you're just gonna take it again on the outside third, squeeze it shut, pull that cork right off. So you can see and take a look at this right now, most of that blank is shown, but there is a little bit of cork that it is epoxied onto the blank. I would remove all this cork with this method. Then I would go back with a Dremel tool and a sanding drum, put a sanding drum on your Dremel tool, and just go back over that blank and lightly touch up where the epoxy and the cork is, and you can grind down those big epoxy bumps. All right, as always, it's good having Buzz in here. Absolutely. We got him, we got him out of the snow and brought him down here into the penthouse. So <laughs> I know he was loving life. For yeah, sure. some great tips in that video. Yeah. Awesome. So since Buzz uh, handled the removal of grips, I'm going to talk about putting grips back on. So we had a, what are we going to do first? We're going to do cork here real quick. Let's do cork real quick. All right, so. Uh, this section of rod blank has made its appearance quite often on the show, uh, mainly during the snakeskin demo. So we cut the grips off here and here. There was a fighting butt, there was a rear section here. 
Now, this is another good example of why you can actually do your snakeskin or your decorative work before you put your grips on. But that's for another time. So, if you notice, cork is not like EVA. So these are the exact same grips, but if you noticed, they're going to have, let's see, can you quite see the EVA one? So the EVA is going to have, this is cork, the EVA is going to have uh, a 250, a 375, or a 500 ID. The cork is only going to have a 250 ID, and we got to ream it out to get it to fit. Now, the tough thing about cork is it doesn't stretch. So when we are reaming it to fit from the fighting butt side, more than likely, this rod blank is going to taper, which means the OD right here is going to be greater than the OD up here where that cork needs to sit. Now, I have reamed this grip out and I took a lot of care in doing so because we want it to just barely get over this section here where the fighting butt goes. I'm talking like barely, barely get over it because once you get up here, you don't want it to be sloppy. And to fix that, you are also going to need to use arbors. And if anybody has watched uh, the previous 95 episodes, you know that I am a tape arbor man. And that's what we're going to use here as well. Because again, the tape arbor is not a structural piece. It's just there to help center this grip. Now, the other good part is I took the extra time to dig out the tenon that actually goes inside most casting reel seats. So if you notice, this piece right here is called the tenon. So the grips down here, this is the tenon. The tenon is there to fit into the back side of the reel seat. Now, you could have just cut this off flush, but as Buzz mentioned, there's not a ton of epoxy that happens when you have EVA, which is what was on here before. So keep in mind, I'm removing EVA and I'm adding back cork because I think cork looks very classy and it'll look good with this snakeskin. Uh, not that, you know, I can fish this rod or anything, but um, for a showpiece, we're going to make it work. So ream to fit. You're going to use a drill in your extreme reamers. And now we're going to slide this on here. Now you can see this is very, very snug. Like, just as I get it over, it's, it doesn't even want to fall off, right? So we're going to slide this on. And if you need to, you can use, I'm not going to, but you can use Pro Paste to help kind of lube this up. So once you get it on, I am actually would then come in here with Pro Paste. Now remember, the Pro Paste needs to be a 50-50 mix. Uh, most rod builders have used Pro Paste at, at some point or another. Always, always, we talk about this every time that we dry fit, always dry fit your grip first. So we're going to dry fit this grip, and it's snug, which is where we want it to be. Now, the good news about me taking the extra time and effort to dig out the previous tenon is now the tenon from the cork is going to help center and stabilize this cork grip. So really, I mean, you probably don't need an arbor under here. There is a tiny, tiny little bit of wiggle. And as you press it, the Pro Paste will probably fill those voids, but we're just gonna talk about it here real quick. So now that we've dry fit it, we'll pull the grip back. And honestly, you're probably only gonna need one or two arbors. More than likely, you're not going to need an arbor back here because this section is going to be a little wider. So we're really going to take, I got it somewhere, right? Is that tape? Yeah, tape. Uh... You know, who took all my stuff? Because I had it today. It's the half inch. Oh, my goodness. I 
I do not see it. All right, stand by, folks. I'm sorry. Is it on the wall? No. I had to use it today. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. so that's where you Uncle left Phil it. Uncle Phil got me. <laughs> All right. Sorry. So yeah, this is live. All right. So this is how you'll add your arbor. Sorry about that, everybody. Couple times around, even if we need that much. Yeah. All right. So this one, because this rod blank was, <clears throat> I believe it was a MB874, one of my favorites. The MB874 has very little taper change in the bottom, like 15 or 16 inches of the rod blank. Very little taper. So once I was able to get the core creamed out to the proper fit. There's not going to be a whole lot of change in this bottom 11 inches, which is typically I run about 10 and 3 quarters or 11 inch on my rear grip for an MB 874. Now, the only other thing why Hunter's over there mixing it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when you ream your cork grip in a normal fashion, you are going to take the reamer. When you slide the reamer down the rod blank, okay, you're going to ream from the bottom side of the grip, right? You're going to ream this direction. The tenon is up here. You're going to ream this way because you're going to slide the grip down the rod blank. Remember, we're doing it the opposite way. Now, because we're going to be using um, arbors and things like that, you're really probably just going to like straight ream it. There's not going to be much taper left in it, but I still ream from the tenon end mostly this way because the reamer is tapered. I want this end to be just a little wider. And I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but I want this side to be just a little wider because I want the bottom of the grip to be the most snug on the rod blank because I've got a tenon to play with, and then I have my arbor up here. And I'm pushing the glue this way, so the glue is stacking in from this end to help also fill the void and whatnot. So I'm still, I know it, I know it sounds sort of ridiculous, but I, I like to ream from this end. This side's going to be a little wider. This side's going to be the tightest fit. We're going to use our arbors down on this end. We shouldn't really need them all throughout. And then, of course, we're going to slide it under the tenon. So I'm going to slide the cork back on. You got me a popsicle stick there, guy? Or did you use them all? Gotcha. I'm kidding. I know you didn't use them all. Cool. You used the fast set, didn't you? Sure did. All right. Uh oh, I know, right? I would be picking those up for a week. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to add our pro paste on here. And this might be the time to add maybe a little more than you typically do because there are going to be a little bit more room under there. I'm going to even it out, push it down. Can you have me a paper towel ready? Because it's about to get right. And right before we make a giant mess by pushing the tenon up under the seat, I'm going to do just a quick, just going to do kind of a quick knockdown here. It's not going to, it's not going to completely keep everything from being a mess, but it helps a little bit. You do want a good, kind of a good squeeze out there. We're ready to rock, okay? Do a little final wipe. Sometimes these paper towels, <clears throat> I feel like I could just use notebook paper and do have a better job. 
We need to get sponsored by like Brawny or somebody. <laughs> Feel like we got like legal pad back here. All right, so I'm gonna do just one more, kind of a quick wipe, just so we don't wear all this. But so yeah, you just uh, clean her up, and she's good to go. Now, granted, this is a really, really, really clean fit because the EVA grip that I cut off of here. It's the exact same model and shape and size as the cork I just applied. So keep in mind, we didn't lose any of our trim band. We didn't lose really anything. It's, it's still what it needs, you know, it's still just a perfect clean look. But that's how you replace your grip to make it look awesome again. Especially if you've got a rod that's got some snakeskin on it, got some cool decorative stuff. Now this snakeskin is pretty low profile, right? If you would have had something um, like this uh, really, really ugly tiger wrap. I don't even know who did this. Um, <laughs> so this is, this is a higher kind of a profile. It's, it's honestly not that big of a deal whether you do cork or whether you do EVA. All it means is you're just going to have to ream it just a little bit more. So if you ream it out a little bit more, you're just going to need a little bit more on the arbor department. And make sure you got a winding check there to come on. Um, and be sure you put both winding checks on before you come in and add that fighting butt. Because if not, you're going to be without winding checks. So, and that's not a terrible thing, but it might not look as good as you want it. So, um, and if you have kind of a longer or a shorter, like this grip is a four inch grip. If we came in here with this cork grip, we're going to be losing a little room there. So it's, it's going to be a situation that you're going to have to come in and add some more thread or maybe do like solid black thread, throw a decal on it. Yep. Um, you're going to have to get creative, but getting creative is better than not having maybe your favorite fishing rod. Um, so, you know, I know Uncle Phil really, really likes this one. I'm, I actually got the grips to properly replace this. I'm gonna do it. He really, you know, he likes it. Second rod he's ever built. I, I do like, you know, the metallic. Um, you know, he made a special foregrip here. He's a big fan of that foregrip. Um, so, he just likes it. So we're gonna make sure that he's got the rod to fish with, so. Yeah, we're, he needs to get back out there with that rod. He really Absolutely. does. You know, we're, we poke yeah. fun at each other, but you just wouldn't believe what they say behind my back. So <laughs> it is what it is. I also take a beating from everybody online, too, about these shows. So it's all part of the fun. <laughs> get in line. That's it. That's it. Um, all right. I do have a trick before we go. Probably shouldn't have mixed that uh, so soon. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's fine. I do, I do have a trick before we go that um, you might encounter during a grip replacement. I just got to find it. All right, here we go. So the hook keeper, the old hook keeper. Now I'm going to go ahead and preface this with an apology because I'm sure that there are rod builders and fishermen and people like that that put hook keepers down here in the split grip. Um, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> um, thoughts and prayers go out to you. Um, I don't do it and I don't like it and so but here we are if you like it and you want to leave it there I'm going to show you how to get a grip over the top of that thing so that uh, you can replace the grips now Buzz Butters went ahead and cut these grips off for me and uh, mailed it back down here so this hook keeper can cause problems because if you try to slide this EVA over it's going to snag it Okay, but I've got a trick here and we're going to show you. And this can also work for winding checks, correct? Oh yeah, um, yeah. stretchable winding checks. Rubber winding checks. Yes, yeah. not metal Not winding metal winding ones, no, no, no. no. Um, let's see, I think I do need to, because you got, this is the 500. Mm, yeah. yeah, down here. Give me that thing. All right. We got to make one more quick mess before we go.
Of course, I pulled the one where the chuck doesn't work. <laughs> John says the trick is to just cut the hook keeper off. There you go. John sounds like my kind of guy. <laughs> Or, you know, just never put it there in the first place. But, you know, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we all have been uh, here left. Here we are. Yeah, here we are. <clears throat> so this is going to go to some of those that do, like, re-gripping of golf clubs. You will recognize this. All right. So I've got just regular old half inch masking tape, okay? If you've got the real wide stuff, if you've got the, uh, the stuff that you use to re-grip golf clubs, even better. But if you don't, you can use this too. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to stick the tape down. I'm gonna come up here above it just a little bit. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna be up here where your grip is gonna fall, right? You can see here, where the grip was previously. So we don't, we don't want to do that. Um, and actually, Hunter, can we switch real quick sure. so you can spot me down here? All right, so I know, I know. I slid out of the screen there. That's why you got to stay on your toes. <laughs> Good? All right, so I'm going to go around this once, and I'm going to flip it over. OK, what I did there is I flipped it over. So the sticky side is now out, OK? Hear that? Sticky side's out. I'm going to wrap down. And I'm going to cover this hook keeper. I'm going to create a ramp. And you can see it doesn't have to be fancy. I'm gonna, you need to go over it quite a few times so that you don't puncture the tape. You can stick this down. And again, if you've got a real like wide strip tape, it certainly does help it. And I'm gonna just run it down here to the end just to make things easy. And I'm gonna hang it off the end just a little bit, okay? So it's off the end there a little bit, and I'm just going to pinch it shut, OK? So this might look like a golf grip, sort of, to some people before you put the grip on. Now, remember, this is where the grip is going to live. You can add, you can go ahead and add your pro paste and whatever. Here, hold that. This stuff is probably already set up, right? No, we're OK. Close. It's getting there. I figure since we're going to do it, we might as well make it so we can fish this thing after we're done. Yeah. Got a little FPA 85 on the house. Phil, you can add another one to your arsenal. Yeah. Maybe do a spiral wrap. <laughs> All right, so sticky side out. Pro paste. Hold that guy. Gotcha. Now for the secret sauce. Mineral spirits. I wonder if they've ever made like an odor full mineral spirits instead of an odor list. I feel like at some point they probably did, right? Where they were like, whoo, that stuff is something else. We ought to make it odorless. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to kind of make a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put if you've got a paintbrush, great. Mm -hmm. If you don't, hold it over the trash can. Don't hold it over your grandmother's you know, dining room table or whatever. And then put this in the palm of your hand. Pour a little in there. Give it the old slosh. Dump it out. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
like butter. Boom. That quick. Hopefully right. you didn't miss it. Good? So you can slide it back off. Take two. Coleman was getting a snack. Okay, comes off that easy. Goes right back over it. Goes right in there. Now, the EVA is, is really locked on there because we had it reamed to the proper fit, right? So now all we have to do is cut this tape off. We'll cut it from down here because this is going to be under our fighting butt, so we're not going to scratch this beautiful metallic blank. And then you just peel it back. And it just peels right off. And after you're done peeling it off, you're left with the gorgeous prize of having a hook keeper still on in between your split grip. So that's just like, it's like Christmas morning in March at night. So. You just sometimes you got to work through it. I overlapped it pretty good a couple times, uh, mainly because what you don't want to do is get halfway through that thing and, and you, your hook keeper busts through the tape. So, all right. And then all we got to do is clean this up. We're good. And try to get the tape off your hand, too. Clean it up with some notebook paper and you're good to go. <laughs> All right. You can, uh, we'll wipe that down. Yeah. Looks Welcome. good, looks good. Now you can, you can do that with cork, but unfortunately cork does not slide or expand. So you're going to have to honestly ream it big enough so that it would get over it whether you got tape on there or not unfortunately so yes that is a bit of a limitation to this whole deal but that uh, that's how you get over it or you can just do what um uh, the guy said earlier and just cut it off yeah don't put it there in the first <laughs> don't place. don't put it there in the first <laughs> yeah. place now granted if you cut it off you're going to be left with a little bit of a booger mark but right? that's fine you can come back in uh, you know, with like a tiger wrap, like Phil did, yeah. a really, really good looking one. Um, and then, uh, or put a decal or something like that in there. So yeah, that's good. Covered up. But, uh, oh yeah, Joe Archer, 71. Do you re-grip re your own golf clubs, Chris? Yes, I do. Yeah, absolutely. And a number of people here at Mud Hall as well, <laughs> when I come up to do the show, they're like, hey, um, we got some, uh, you know, grips. Uh, <laughs> somebody said, Idiot vs. Fish said, I gotta know how big a fish Chris lost due to a horrible accident with a split grip keeper. <laughs> it's gotta be a story there. Yeah, right? You know, I would almost, you would think there would be a story, like a cool story, but there's not. I think I just remember seeing it and uh, being like, what's going on here? Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. No, mm -mm. no, it really doesn't. I, yeah, I probably didn't put it exactly like that. I probably had other choice of words, but <laughs> you can imagine. You can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so I think that's about it, right? Yeah, I think that covers I think it. We, I think we covered it. All right, so we have, we're like five or so, we're 10 till eight. So you know what that, we have time for. We have time pew, for pew, uh, pew, pew, pew. rapid fire Q&A. Or as Hunter likes to call it, seven rapid minutes in heaven. Q&A. Yeah, something like that. So put those seven minutes on it. And let's get after it. Let's see. Um, bum, 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 bum. How often would you recommend resealing that cork? Hey, what happened? Are we running? Uh oh. I don't see no clock. Did you put the Did you put the fire out? Uh oh. Oh, there oh. it is. There he is. All right. So Kevin Tramp asks, how often would you recommend resealing the cork? Uh, personally, me, man, eh, maybe once a year. Uh huh. Yeah. I think it's one of those things. It's like uh, when necessary. Yeah, that's it's, it. It's really hard to say. Oh, every six months or every year. True. Because if you fish, you know, like like now, you can go fish after work. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a lot of a lot of water time in there. You're gonna have to do it. Um, hey, somebody said finally a video with everything exactly explained. Well, Bill, thank you for watching. I'm glad we were able to get that. 
Um, all right, this is a great question, Ralph. What is the link to the new products that were shown earlier? Keep in mind, we got the guys in the war room. They're putting them up. I wanted to bring this to attention so that they've probably been lost up into the comment string here. So Ralph, we'll get the guys to get those back in. That way, you're going to know where you can find that core wrapper when it goes live, uh, as well as, what else did you talk about tonight? Uh, G2s are back next oh, week. Oh, yeah, and the G2s as yeah. well. A really, really good idea is to click that email button that says, let me know when these come in, because when they hit, you can buy it immediately, and you don't have to wait. Uh, also, on our website, we have a place that shows you all of these things that we used on the show tonight. So that's, that's good. Um, all right, Penny asks, what's the heat shrink ratio? How do you know what size to use? Uh, Penny, get you a digital caliper. That digital caliper is then going to give you a measurement of the widest portion of that grip. All right, this is a two to one shrink. So if the shrink is, you know, half inch, it's going to get down to quarter inch. If it's a one inch, it's going to get to a half inch. So at least the digital caliper, not only will you be able to know how to buy heat shrink, but also your winding check sizes and other things like yep. that. Um, bum, 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 bum. Oh, this might be pretty good here. I always like not reading all the question before I put it up. That always lends us down. All right, Hunter, cork tape question. Ooh, okay. All right. Does cork tape have a shelf life? I was putting cork tape on a surf blank, and as I was applying the cork tape, it tar started to split. The roll of cork tape is 10 years old. Uh, yeah, I would say that's probably past its uh, shelf life. You know, it, it obviously has an adhesive back. Yeah. So over time, I'm sure that, you know, adhesive breaks down a little bit. And I'm not sure the exact shelf life, but uh, 10 years is probably pushing But I so. think, Mark, congratulations. I think you found it. I think we're going to start <laughs> yeah. telling people that 10 years is too old. Uh, in all seriousness, yeah, that's, that's probably too old. I think yeah. with it, between the adhesive and just the cork and I think it's you're gonna have a rough go there um, mm -mm -mm. this is a good one arms family fishing what is the easiest way to order aluminum winding checks for the right size I'm always off by a lot resources tab yes so we have uh, dimensions every two inches correct I think so for every two inches from the butt to like 18 or 20 inches yeah. up the rod blade for MHX CRB across the board yeah um, so and shout out to Sean Chaney. He has worked on that for as long as I've been here. And he's, he's the one that keeps it up. Yeah. So, you know, Sean, he's in here. He's in the war room tonight. So he's the one that keeps that accurate. And it is accurate. So you can run over there, blank. It looks like a big Excel spreadsheet. You can find your MB842, figure out your handle length, go, man, I need a winding check right here at eight inches. What's the diameter of that blank? Now remember, you always got to order the size up if you're in between, yeah, right? It's always a good idea to order a couple extra sizes, especially if it's like a black, you know. Oh, you're always going to need it. You're going to use them at some point. For um, sure. So order a couple extra sizes, even if it's a half size, a full size up. Yeah. It's always good to have a few extra. Yeah, because they typically come in a half size, yeah. right? So you're not going to be able to get it where it needs to go if, you know, you order the half size down. Yeah. And if it's like, you know, quarter off, you can always wrap a little bit of thread underneath it yep. to fill that gap. Yeah. And all of these blanks vary in diameters. So even the exact measurement we give you might not be down to the, you know, thousandths of an inch. Right, exact. right. but so, it's going to be close enough. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is good. He said, when are you going to build, do a show on how to build a travel rod? Mm. Maybe we could do that soon. I know people probably have summer vacation yeah, coming, coming up. up. Yeah. Want to, uh, Want to take that travel rod fishing and get away from the in-laws, maybe, or the screaming kids? Perfect. Um, can you use the same technique with EVA or wind grips? I'm not sure which one you were asking about, but... I think I remember that question was around the time that you did the uh, cork install uh -huh. from the butt. So. Yep, yep. So we, we took care of that. Uh, and then I, too, aspire. I hope Chris doesn't wrap Christmas presents like that. No, I don't. I'm more <laughs> of a gift bag guy yeah. so that I don't have to do that. And we don't really give Christmas presents at Festivus. It's just a big <laughs> galvanized pole in the corner. Um, all right, let's see if we're missing anything else. Um, yeah, look at that. Sean Chaney's the bomb. Perfect. Um, bum, 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 bum. Oh, what's the skew for the mullet wig that Falconer was sporting on that video? Mm, that's a one of a kind. Yeah, that's actually Jake's. <laughs> um, 
mm, 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 just trying to, how durable is that shrink wrap? Uh, very durable. Um, I'd say probably even, it probably holds up honestly better than even the wind polymer does. Um, I would you know, think so. Shrink, shrink tubing, you mm -hmm. know, is very popular, especially with the, the surf and saltwater guys. Um, yeah. So, you know, if it holds up in that environment, it's, it's a pretty tough material, so. Uh, this is another good question. Whoa. Uh, what's the difference between feel and wind and shrink wrap? Does the shrink wrap have a tacky feel? No. No. It's not tacky, but it's, what do they call it? Flocked. Flocked. Yeah, it's a little, it's kind of textured. Yeah, it's, it's um, almost like it's, it's like a peach fuzz kind of a feel to yeah, it. Yeah, it's a good way to describe it, yeah. It's like, it's like velvet. <laughs> like, what is this, velvet? Yeah. Are you we know? talking about rod building? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of is, though. Like, the, the scale part, the, the actual, like, lines are just the plasticky heat shrink material. But the place is in between the actual scale, not the outlines. The scale has kind of a, you know. Flocked. A flocked, yes, which is, you know, if it was socially acceptable, <laughs> I would drape myself in velvet, I think is the quote, right? Um, all right, cool. What are we going to do for episode 100? Ooh. Ted, you better hang on, because if I haven't melted Hunter's card in the past, We're gonna burn it. I'm going to melt it. <laughs> All right, cool. That's it. That's it. So let's see. Oh, all right, Cindy, I'll give you this one, because I actually did this earlier. Um, tip from Cindy, pro tip. Yep. You can add some black marbling pigment to the pro paste. It hides blemishes on some repairs you do. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself away here. So speaking of that, I actually used some black pigment on Pro Glue Five to glue this hook keeper down. Remember how we talk about we show some things how to do and how not to do? Don't do this. Okay. <laughs> this is white thread with Pro Glue Five with black pigment on it. The only reason I did that is because I wouldn't dare put a hook keeper there. So I had to, um, and I had to do it last minute. And I couldn't just put thread because I was afraid I would move it, and I didn't want that to happen on live. So that's a what not to do with a hook keeper. Not only should you not put a hook keeper there, you should also not put Pro Glue 5 with black pigment over thread and expect that to be the proper way to finish off a guide. No. So there you have it. All right, um, giveaway three. It's the last giveaway of the night. Thank you guys for sticking around with us for an hour and 28 minutes. We're going to get you out of here before an hour and a half, I promise. Um, Uncle Phil, you got a giveaway queued up. Hunter, what are we giving away? So we're going to do a CRB color series spinning or casting, your choice, uh, rod kit, plus the new CRB oh, core. You're going to be the first one to get it. CRB core hand wrapper. You're yeah. going to be one of the first people mm -hmm. I like that box. to pick up this prize. I like that box. Yeah, I mean, you can't miss it. It's a, it's a Hoffma and the boys box there. I yep. like it. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, he's already got it running. Uh-oh. He's already got it running. Who we got? Who we got? Schrader Boys TV. Nice. You got out of YouTube. That's it. Smash that like button for Schrader Boys TV on YouTube. Great prize. Sweet. Uh, live at mudhole.com is the email. That's where you can find me. And... Um, you know, if you got any tips or suggestions for the show. Again, the travel rod, that was a great suggestion, yeah. especially with summer coming up. Uh, hopefully people are going on some fun summer vacations that you might get a little fishing in. So we'll put that in the queue. And of course, if you've got any others, throw it in there. Live at mudhole.com. Uh, the winners need to slow it. To, uh, let's see, send me an email and I will get back with you because there's a couple, I forget all the prizes, but I'll be asking. If you want a colored real seed, if you want, you know, I know the MHX wind grips come in black and green and black and, and things like that. So um, now the next show topic, that is going to be on April what? April 25th. So we're going to be coming to you in a month, April 25th, and we're going to be talking about under wraps. We're going to be talking about why do you need them? What do you use them for? Uh, do you have to have them? Are they just decorative? Whatever. We're going to go from top to bottom on under wraps. That's going to be episode 97, Tuesday, April 25th at, of course, 630 Eastern here in the penthouse. You're going to be here, right? Uh, I think I'll be here. Yeah, yeah. Hunter will be here. 
Um, unfortunately, uh, Jake is in Europe again. There's, there's no Mullet Minute, but he's getting some really cool content. No, I'm kidding. Jake is here, but no Mullet Minute tonight. Uh, he helped out a lot getting the show and stuff ready, cutting some grips off, doing a lot of stuff. So uh, he does a lot of behind the scenes, even if it doesn't have to do with the Mullet Minute. So we got to cut him some slack for that. Uh, we appreciate it. And, of course, the other team members. I know Sean was in the building tonight, I believe. Uh, Hoffman helping out. Uh, we had the Birdman in the war room. Of course, Jake was in the war room as well. Um, we got some wings that we got to go eat. Hunter, my left-hand man, of course. But don't forget the camera guys. Yep. We had Uncle Phil on the ones and twos and the cool man doing his damnedest on that Zoom tonight. <laughs> I was ch He was chasing me all over. I, I need to get better. I know I need to get better. But well, good job, man. All right, thank you to all of the viewers. We appreciate it. Congratulations to all the winners, and we will see y'all in April for Under Wraps, show 97. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.